Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon and I'm with Pick and Boots Vintage down in sunny Southwest Florida. And I am here today to um, do a fun little DIY Mother's Day project. We're going to make some DIY gifts for mom. So look at this little repurposed glass. This is simply an old candle. The glass jar, you know, once you uh, finish the candle, clean it out, and um, then you are left with these. So this is what we're gonna play with today. This one's just basic. This one is just um, the ephemeral melange transfer. And I did this one ahead of time, so you can kind of see where we're going with this today, just for fun. So that one, and you can just stick um, one of these, little candle in it, and light it up, and you can set it in a, like a display. And I think the moms will love that. All right, so, and then there's another one we're gonna do. I started, um, let me just show you this one. This one, look how pretty this one is. Now you notice it's mirrored. I'm gonna show you how I got that mirrored effect. But this would look beautiful with this little candle in there. So it lights up and just sitting in, your mom will love this. Of course you can make it for yourself. But this transfer I'm using is the Whispering Willow. And this one was designed by, let me put her up, by the one and only Lexi Granger. Um, I met her, very humble, very sweet. And um, anyway, I can't say enough things about her. She was awesome. First thing I did was I, on all of these that I prepped for today, I went ahead and sealed them just in case you want to put some water or liquid in there so it doesn't pull or push off the transfer that I'm putting on. So I did put a little barrier on there <clears throat> and I, I prepped that ahead of time and I simply just use a clear varnish. You can use whatever you want, um, whatever brand of paint you use. So they're ready to go, but you can see it's clear. You can't really even notice that it's on there. This one dries really clear, so that's nice. Um, then I have one here that we're gonna use. This one I put the clear coat on, then I went ahead and put one coat of the primer or slick stick, whatever kind of brand you use to make things adhere to glass. I put that on there too, and one coat of paint. Now this is one that I prepped and have ready too, but I'm gonna show you how I did this. So this is cute. So this could either be like a pen holder for like if you have children, you wanna make this for your grandma, you can change that, I put mom, or if you wanna make this and have your little kids paint it for you and give it to you for Mother's Day. Or you don't even have to use it for Mother's Day. It could just be just something because it is spring. So let's get started. Let's do the transfer one first. So look at the difference. So I have, this one is clear. I chose not to mirror this one, but look how cute this one is. It's just darling. Um, I think this would look really pretty if you used it on like a you know those tall vases you get from like FTD when they're always clear and real thin, but you could put some of these beautiful transfers on them and they will just lighten or brighten those up. Sometimes you're like, what do I do with them? I have 20 of them. <laughs> uh, so you can just add some of the IOD transfers. Now this one, I love, love, love this one. Now this is part of the Whispering Willow transfer. And all it is, I simply just, she, there's beautiful colors. She does a lot of watercolors, so there, you can see the watercolor designs of these transfers. So what I did was I sprayed the middle with the mirror mist, super easy, and then I rubbed the transfer on the outside. And that's what we're gonna do right now. Now the mirror mist, I just have this mirror mist here. There's different kinds. You can use mercury glass, you can use whatever you want. Now if I wanted it to be a true mirror, after spraying that, I would want to coat it with black paint so it would make it look like a mirror. But I'm I actually am going more for a see-through. So when I put the candle through, it'll light up and have a, just some, some different elements of light coming through, which is what the look I was going for. Now, um, maybe on one, I'll leave it with just the mirror mist. And the other one, I'll go ahead and use a little bit of the black chalk paint so you can see the difference how one will become more mirrored and one will be more like mercury glass. I've done this before on one of the videos here on IOD that I did um, old cabinet glass doors. So I turned one into a mirror, one into mercury glass. That's probably in the uh, archive files maybe <laughs> down the list of videos on IOD page. So let's go ahead and do this. So what I did was I just took my mercury glass spray 
and I just sprayed the inside. I didn't want to go too heavy because I still want the, <clears throat> Woo! it's a little poignant, so make sure you have a fan or doing a well va ventilated area. But so you see, it's just light enough. So when I put my candle in, it'll, the light will still flicker through. So we're going to do that. And then I'm just going to set, I just have this, I, I like to use these. These are just those wood little boxes that you get at the craft store. And whatever you have that's rolling now does not roll. So I'm going to take this one. I love these flowers. And it's actually long enough that I can wrap it around. And now I know that my flowers are a little bit wider than this glass. But that's okay. What I did here is I just wrapped it around the top. And it still is beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and cut. And you can use whatever flowers. Um, you can use birds. You can use whatever kind of transfer you like. So I kind of like, I'm just going to take it like this and wrap it. And I'll just remove the paper. So I'm just going to take this and wrap it around. Kind of give it a light rub to where I want it to be. And it almost makes it around. Now I can see from here, I'm going to miss part of this. I'm going to miss part of this flower down here, but that's okay. I'm just going to take my little rubbing tool. And you have to be kind of careful. I'm a little heavy-handed, so I want to make sure that I don't press too hard or too firm that I'm going to shatter this glass. That would not be good. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it an, a good once-over and turn it as I go. I'm just using it here on this wood box so it doesn't roll around. So after you are rubbing and you think that it might be time for it to release, you can just start picking it up and you'll know. Nope. So this part, you got to give it a little bit more of a rub and I know it will release eventually. You can actually hear it release. It like comes off the plastic. There we go. I was trying to be a little gentle because it is glass. And you can tell when it releases because it becomes translucent. And if you start pulling it back and just one little part didn't trans transfer on, you can just fold it back down and apply some more pressure. There we go. Little piece right here. So this one little part isn't wanting to release. And it's not because of the surface underneath. It's just because I can't get a good grip on it. I'm going to hold it this way now. This way will let me be a little bit more pressure. I think the box had a little bit of give. And you could also, if you don't want to try to attempt to do the whole thing like I'm doing right here, you can also cut little sections off and layer your flowers. That's okay too. So part of just this one little part. There we go. So when I released it, it came off here. But look, you can just simply lay it down. And then once I seal it, it will be on there. See how pretty that is? And you can see the mercury glass. This one, I went really light with the mercury glass. So when we put the candle in, it'll glow. And this one, I'm going to put some, it already it looks a little darker on the camera, but I'm going to put paint in the middle of it, paint it black. And that's how you get the mirrored look as opposed to the mercury glass look because there is a difference. Those are just a couple ideas. Now I'm gonna show you one more, and this is one you can actually, you know, have your kids involved with. We're just gonna take some air dry clay, and we're going to simply add it to, I have another one here ready to go. And we're gonna start with, we have the Harper mold. This is my, my I love this one, love, love, love this one. And then we're gonna use, he loves me. and. On, the, on this one here, I use the bigger flower, I use this one, but I might use a smaller flower so I can put mom maybe underneath the flower instead of behind it. So that's what we're going to do right now. Now normally when I'm using these Harper, I like to use the resin just because it, it makes the letters crisp, clean, and perfect. Sometimes when you use the Air Dry Clay in the Harper, um, they can become a little bit distorted, <laughs> like when you pull them out because the clay stretches. The resin doesn't really stretch, but I need these, so I want these to bend around here. Sometimes I'll use the cornstarch, especially on a really fine mold, but I find sometimes when you use the cornstarch, it lifts too easy 
when I'm trying to make sure they have all the clay in. So it just depends. And you can always, always, always stick it in the freezer for, you know, 10 minutes, pop it out, and then they pop out really easy. Now, the way that I get my clay out with the least amount of stretching, let me just do the O2 since, since I'm here. And did I mention how much I love, love, love this micro rim? It just makes it super easy to get a nice, clean edge. So what I do is I simply, I just flip it upside down and I push out. Now, you don't want to push too hard or you'll smush your letter, but you just kind of roll it out. And then I give it a little help with my finger, trying not to push too hard. I'm trying to let it release itself. There we go. To try to keep it in its the form it's supposed to be. And of course, when you push it like that, it will manipulate. But I didn't have I don't have any stretch marks or anything like that. So that is perfect. Now let me do the O. Same thing for the O. I just let it release a little bit, pull it down. Pop it out. All right, I need to do one more M. Pull that one off. Okay. Now this one I didn't do as good a job because you can see there's a little bit, whoopsies, <laughs> right here at the top of my M, there's a little bit of extra clay. So I'm just gonna take this and pull it away. There we go. All right, so we're gonna glue that on and we're gonna put it at the bottom here. And again, this is with primer. All right, so I'm just gonna stick some glue out. I like to, um, if I'm not using the gel, I like to use the wood glue, but I prefer just to take my finger and smoosh it on as opposed to try to squeeze it on. So we're gonna go right along the bottom and I'm gonna try to reform the M. How does that look? There we go. They're super cute. And you can use old jelly jars. I've seen where people have used, um, they've repurposed little yogurt jars. And for people like, uh, I know me, a crafter, whenever I see a jar, it's like, my husband tries to throw it away. I'm like, no, I can use that. So now we have mom on there, as opposed to like on this one, I did mom in the middle and the big flower here. But we're gonna do a smaller flower. We're gonna put my mold, here it is. And maybe put two flowers, we'll see. Cause we have a bunch of different flowers here. Let's start with this the one right here. Sometimes you can use a little, use a little palette knife. So if you're using something, like have a big one, you can just splice it right off. And look at that, it's just perfect. Especially with this micro rim. So that was good. And I'm not gluing yet cause I'm just going to, oh. That just made me think, look how cute this would be if I had the flower for the ma, the O instead. Oh my gosh, maybe I'll just, ah, <laughs> I'll just pull that off and I'm gonna re-glue that on. What do you think? Now I haven't painted this yet, but I will. You can paint your air dry clay when it's still wet. You just wanna make sure it doesn't move. So look, what do you think? Isn't that cute? So we have the flower on the front and then the mom on the back. I love it, love it, love it. All right, so let's go back to this one. <laughs> Sorry, I get sidetracked. I get a little excited. But I think that's what those creators do. We start with one direction, and sometimes we end up in a totally different direction, and that's okay. Okay, so here's one little flower there. And let's do another one over here. Let's talk about how do you store your air dry clay. I just use a Ziploc bag, and I try to put it back in. I try to remember to close it up as soon as I'm done. There's nothing worse I'll do a live or I'll do a project and I'll go get a drink of water. Then I'll start talking with somebody. I come back in the next day and I left my whole thing of the air dry clay out as hard as a rock. Okay. So there's two flowers. What do you think? So maybe one more, maybe we should add a leaf. Let's see what the leaf looks like. Okay. So I said I was going to do a, uh, a leaf and here I am making another flower. See? <laughs> All right. Let's go back and put this leaf on. Now I want to be very careful because of that can be a little hard to get out. So let me start at the top. So when I roll this out, start it here, gently pull, and then there we go. And I don't have to use the whole stem, but I can. So if you want your molds to crack, especially like big ones, like some people want that cracked effect so they can fill it in with, um, you know, some wax or something to make it look old. You want to use little pieces to 
to make it. So I could take this flour here and just take different pieces, smoosh it in when I pull it out. It'll crack wherever I've like put pieces in like this to where they join. If you don't want any cracks or you want minimal cracks, use one big piece of clay. So on something like this, you want to roll it out, smoosh it and be like, um, make it a pancake. Then when you pull it out, another very, very important thing for it not to crack, don't stretch it. So for instance, like here's my flour. This is an extra one I just made. Um, if I were to bend it around, it has a tendency to, to pull. What I don't want to do is I don't want to stretch it because wherever I stretch it, it makes it weak and that has a tendency to crack too. So I'm always making sure that my mold, I don't pull it and I use one piece of clay that'll give you minimal cracking. I'm going to do this. There we go. Ta-da! Maybe we do need another flower because the nice thing about it is when you're using air dry clay, you can layer them. You don't, if you're using resin, sometimes if it, if you don't pull it out early, it's hard. You, you have a hard tendency to bend them. I know some people say to heat them with a heat gun. I highly recommend not doing that purely because you're emitting all those toxic fumes. Um, and that just scares me. So I, I, I don't recommend that, but I'm not your mom. <laughs> Anyway, all right, let's glue these on. Then we're going to paint um, glue. Here we go. If you can go in and speak to your local retailer, they are so, they'll be so informative. They'll give you so many good tips and tricks, and you can actually uh, hold the products in your hand. I highly recommend, if you have a local retailer, to go in and visit them. There we go. So we're just going to kind of layer it now. And what's nice about these, like I said again, the air dry clay. They will bend and go around the flowers and, and layer, but I want to be careful. I don't want to stretch it too far because I don't want them to crack. Maybe we'll put it off center a little bit and then maybe we'll put one more over there. That's what we're going to do. For this right now, I'm just using the Tight Bond Quick and Thick Glue. It works well. There are all different things you can use. I like Heavy Body Gel too. Heavy Body Gel is a really good medium to use to get stuff to glue on. All right, so I'm thinking I need one more here. And let's see, um, if it was stamps, I could mask it so I could have just half of it coming out. But let's see, um, maybe we'll try, we're gonna try something. I've never really tried it before, so let's just, let's just give it a go. I'm gonna use just half of this, and I'm gonna see if I can bend it around that so it looks like it's layered. Why not? Let's just give it a go. Pop that out. So now I have just half of the flower. I guess I could have made the whole flower and just cut it, but. And let's see, if I put it, it would look better underneath, but maybe we can, let's, I'm gonna lift this up just to scotch. And then we can put it like that. There we go. So now I'm just gonna slick some, stick some glue under there, because I definitely don't want that to come off. Why is it being, there must be a clog in my glue. There we go. So now we have some layered flowers and maybe we'll just do a partial leaf just to kind of balance it. I pro I, I'm not gonna use the whole entire leaf. I'm only gonna use part of the leaf. I'm gonna make the whole leaf though because I don't know exactly how much I would like to use and how much I don't. Mm, let's see, I just wanna put just a little bit of leaf right there. That'll just balance it out with glue. There we go. Ta -da. So now we have this cute little repurposed glass jar that we're going to paint and mom could store anything she wants in it. I already did seal it with a clear coat so it won't let the water, what if it condensates if they put a plant in it or something. But this is more for like trinkets, pens, pencils, what have you. So let that dry. This one's still wet. And um, so these are the ones. I just want to show you what happens when you add the black paint to the mirror spray we use. So I'm just going to use a little brush and I'm just taking some black chalk paint. Doesn't matter what brand you use. You can use acrylic paint, whatever. And I'm going to give it a once over inside. Like I can, I can always tell the difference. Can you see that? Ooh, beautiful. There we go. Let me put that to the side. Let me show you the difference between these two now. 
See, one is totally looks mirrored, and then one looks like mercury glass, so you can see through it. So then when you put the little candles in, they still bright and light up. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna paint these live right now. I'm just gonna paint them a little bit and you can create these because they're simple yet they are impactful. You guys have a fabulous day and uh, take care.